Hello, beloveds. Loving this opportunity to come and share with you again. Yeah, tonight we begin our weekend online retreat. And the topic for this weekend is Undoing the Doer. So, for those of you that feel like you're more of a human doing than a human being, uh, and you feel stress, and you feel doubt and uncertainty. Yeah, I'd like to, to give a little bit of a context for what undoing the doer is all about. So first of all, spiritually speaking, love creates like itself, so Love is a presence, it's a state of mind, it's not a place, it's not a person, it's not really even an action, it's just a state of mind, a state of pure being, that's what love is. And so, when we talk about undoing the doer, it's more like dismantling the self-concept uh, disidentifying from this image that you thought yourself to be, awakening from the, the dream that you're a separate person surrounded by other separate persons with a private mind and private thoughts. Undoing the doer is making the transition from being identified with behavior, with actions, which are in the realm of perception, and opening up to such a purification of that perception, you could call it uh, right-minded perception, or true perception, or healed perception, whatever you'd like to call it, but that is a very high state of attainment. It's what we call the forgiven world or the happy dream. And a big step, a major step, you might even say a phase of transition towards coming to that happy dream, is allowing the spirit to use everything of this world, including the body. So sometimes people talk about the body is like a puppet, so imagine being a puppet on the spirit's strings, so to speak, with the spirit as the, as the, the puppet master. All for the point of bringing back the mind to the remembrance of pure being, of being love, of, of abstraction, of light just a pure state of joy. And this transition from perceiving yourself to be a human being to a very broadened, expanded perception is what healing is all about. So, as you go deeper, you it's important to have a context for this a great awakening. And what I'm sharing with you right now is that to the extent that you follow the ego's purposes for the world and the body, namely pride, pleasure, and attack, is to that same extent will you be identified with the body as who you are and uh, as your home, so to speak. Uh, believing that you're in a body, and then defending the body. And that can involve a lot of defense mechanisms, both psychological defense mechanisms and even uh, physically defending the body. Or purchasing things in the world to protect the body and defend the body. And all this is part of a misidentification, forgetting the spirit that you are and taking on a false 
self-concept or self-image that's very body-oriented. So tonight's beginning of this three-day weekend will be a beautiful welcome for all of our online guests and also it will be the first session of four. There will be also a morning session and an afternoon session. Uh, that's more uh, Mountain Standard Time and Central Standard Time uh, in terms of those those time zones. And then of course in the same time zone there will be a, a morning session on Sunday morning. And of course this is broadcast all over the world so you have to check on your your time zone to see when it will be showing in your area of the world. But it really gives us a, a great opportunity to start to realize that, that when we follow the teachings of Jesus and He is calling us out of the world that, that as we move deeper in alignment with the Spirit's call, the true calling of our heart, then we will become less and less identified with the body and less and less motivated by fear or by lack or need. It becomes abundantly clear that as we're in purpose with the Spirit, then everything we think and say and do is a blessing to the whole universe. And today I'd like to come to this beautiful teaching that uh, that behavior emanates out of perception. You you act or behave according to what you perceive. And when your perception becomes increasingly unified, then you could say that your motivation for behavior becomes more and more love-centered and joy-centered and happiness-centered in the ultimate sense. And I mean happy for no reason. I mean not talking about happy in terms of getting things in the world, but happy because of your very nature, the very nature of our being. So, there are a progression of seeming steps that you go through uh, in learning to follow guidance, in learning to be inspired in, in everything. And I would say listening to guidance, uh, being intuitive, uh, being uh, very aligned, in terms of uh, all aspects of the mind, aligned with the Spirit. These are the gateways to experiencing yourself uh, as a being. Uh, you may still perceive the body and the body is, it becomes more peripheral in your awareness because there isn't the need to hold on to the concepts of this world, to try to achieve something in the future, to try to change or fix the world. These motives fall away, they're washed away as the mind becomes aligned with this beautiful state of being. It was Shakespeare who said, to be or not to be, that is the question. And still true. Uh, that's really kind of a reflection of what Jesus says in A Course in Miracles, that what is it for is the only question you need to ask yourself. What is the purpose? Because everything that you experience starts with the purpose that you want to hold in mind the purpose that you desire. That's what lights everything up. 
And as you align with the Spirit's purpose, then everything that you perceive is in alignment as well. Because that's how the mind works. The mind is unified when it perceives in a very loving and holistic way. Now, spiritual awakening is really a journey into an experience. It's not an intellectual journey. In the end, you could say it's not just a journey of holding fast to a concept of what it means to be spiritual, but actually more of a falling away of the concepts as you experience the true meaning of forgiveness. That everything is whole, that everything is unified, that everything is complete. And when you give yourself over to this experience, when you desire this experience above all else, then that is the experience that you have and are. Because at this point, having and being are seen to be the same. So, the questions can arise, you know, will I have to give up my personal life? Will I have to give up my personal possessions, my personal attachments, my personal opinions, my personal agendas? Of course, of course, of course you have to let all that go. You can't be who you are and hold on to something that you're not. But I would say more of it's an outgrowing. It's not like you have to fight against the erroneous allegiances of your mind. It's more that you get into your joy, into your inspiration, your purpose, and then the rest just melts away. It just falls away. And how wonderful, how wonderful that is. So I'm really looking forward to seeing you all coming up not too long from now. I think it's, uh, yeah, some hours away, but yeah, I can feel it already. It's uh, the anticipation of this opportunity to be, to just be, and the step towards that, of course, is a very practical step. It's, a, it's, it's being done through, it's allowing the Spirit to use all aspects of the world for the purpose of unifying perception. And then when the perception is unified, when there's no longer fragmented perception and fragmented mot motives, you actually come to a unified experience in which you see that there is nothing at all to do. How could we state that? You could say there's nothing that you need to do to be who you are. But in the approach, it will seem as if the behaviors are inspired and there, there's a gentleness that comes through and there's a, a loving gaze in your eyes and you smile more frequently, your forehead is serene. You know, there's, there's beautiful symbols there from the Course that are just kind of harbingers of telling you, you know, it's going to be different from your everyday perceptions because what you were perceiving as the human condition, you know, was, was a distortion and that there is a higher perception, a higher perspective that is readily available and, and grasped as you desire it. And the practice of listening to guidance and following guidance is, is a very helpful practice. 
you know, the people that I know and work with, and even throughout our spiritual communities, the practice emphasis, putting things into practice is so, so very important. And as you do, you start to feel the expansion in your awareness. You start to feel all-inclusive, unlimited. That's what the expansion really is. So, if some of you are, are used to listening to me on Spreaker and you hear this message, you are certainly welcome to sign up for our online retreat, Undoing the Doer, starting tonight and then rolling into tomorrow, Saturday and then as well Sunday. And these are always really vibrant online gatherings. There's, there's a lot that is shared, there's a lot of depth, it's very, very profound, and then also there's a lot of participant interaction uh, through the platform of Zoom. So, if you don't have Zoom on your phone, your smartphone, or your computer, then it would be good to, to download this free software, because that's how the interactions are facilitated. So Zoom is uh, serving us, and zooming inward toward the Kingdom of Heaven. <laughs> yeah, it's quite beautiful. Thank you, thank you all my beloveds. I love you so dearly and look forward to seeing you. Many, many, many blessings. <laughs>